This week in Warcraft, the Alliance Chopper will be available for gold, the Blood Elf updated models will not be in at the Warlords launch, and the character faces are being updated for more variation. I'm Mezzi and welcome to our weekly episode number 42, and we're back with a normal podcast this week. Of course, joining us are LJ. How are you, LJ? I'm doing quite alright. Yourself? It's been a stressful day. My... Uh, it's yeah. been a special two weeks for me because of the move, but yeah. Yeah, a brand new setting. Yep, got a new headset as well, so really prepared for it now. And a new webcam by the looks of it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, so awesome. Also joining us is Matt. Welcome back, Matt. Hello. How have you been? Yeah. Oh, oh, not too shabby recently. Get in there. Getting there, okay. Yeah, it's been busy, busy, busy life and real all that malarkey. So um, nice to ch relax for a weekend. Sounds good. So let's get right into it. Um, we've been away from the normal type of podcast for a couple of weeks with LJ's moving and Matt doing stuff. Um, it was better to just have the news edition of the podcast for the past two weeks. Um, so one of the things we haven't discussed at all is that got announced that the faction, uh, or rather the auction houses, will now be server-wide instead of faction-wide. So the Alliance and Horde uh, auction houses are going to be merged into one. Is this a, a good thing or a bad thing? Because this changes everything as to how the game has been up until, well, 10 years. Uh, LJ, want to get us started? Uh, no, but okay. <laughs> no, um, I think it's actually a good thing uh, for the point of view that you know you have a lot of uh, servers that are really um, orientated on one side, so they are alliance or horde heavy. You have some servers that have eighty to ninety percent of one side, and we, I've well, we've all played on one of those uh, servers. I have that as well. It's just really impossible to really get professions done and stuff like that unless you want to grind, which is of course a, a very viable option, but if you don't want to, uh, and you just want to, you know, spend some money and such, it's 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 very difficult because uh, but also just like stuff like glyphs and, and materials that you really need uh, for your character are really hard to come by if you don't possess the um, uh, skills yourself, or mm -hmm. the right amount of money, because the pr prices are such, so high, so I think that uh, in that point of view, that is really a step uh, forward uh, to make um, uh, the the the, the auction house more fair to everybody on the server, not just one faction, because there's a majority of that on that server. So that being said, that being said, though, but uh, yeah, it is a concept that has been working for the past ten years. That uh, they are suddenly changing now. I get that they want to make like they've also been reforming group, uh, server groups and also been merging servers. If I'm correct, right? Yeah, exactly. So they are. <laughs> really working on that uh, on different aspects, and I think the auction house is just another phase in that uh, whole pro project, probably. So, if it's going to be that make that much difference, I think it probably will more than you'd expect, actually, because an economy of a server is very important uh, and not something to be underestimated, especially at so. the start of an expansion. I mean, prices yeah. can be really high for one faction. Yeah, so, exactly. really, after this, um, only those low-populated realms with uh, who haven't been connected to other servers yet will be screwed. Yeah. And everyone else will be fine. True. Okay. Yeah. Any yeah. thoughts, Matt? Well, my same. Um, do I fully agree with it? Probably not. I can't, just don't like change, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I, um, yeah. I understand why it's happening, but it is just because, as I say, some servers, there are no actual details at all uh, no um not alliance side horse side so yeah i can understand why they're doing it shame really but end of the day it's happening so not a lot we can do well we can always give feedback of course and for me it i mean i understand why it's happening and probably should but because you shouldn't be pe penalized for which faction you choose but it feels like something that's been part of the core gameplay. The pure difference between Alliance and Horde. And having that one uh, neutral uh, auction house from the goblins. 
having uh, that uh, mediate a bit. I I just feel sad. It's like losing something, a part of the game, of the core concepts, that that just vanishes. So I understand why it's why they're doing it, and it's good in the long run, especially for the players on low populated realms or on the low faction uh, uh, server. But still, it's gonna it's gonna be a mourning process, I think. Actually, getting used to just. Everyone, same auction house. Hopefully the prices will be cheaper, though. Yeah. Um, so that would be nice. Uh, let's just move right on to the next thing, then, unless uh, you guys have any last comments on the auction houses? No, it's about it, I think. Okay. Uh, same here. Nothing uh, <laughs> more to say. Yeah. Okay, so next up, the Blood Elf updated models are not going to be in at Warlord's launch. Now, obviously... Many people, are on the vocal minority, let me put it that way, is upset about it because, oh, Blizzard promised this and they're cutting content. But are they really, though? Because originally they said that their goal was to just get the classic races in and not up to and including the Burning Crusades races. So, how do you guys look at this? Should the Blood Elves be in the only race uh, from classic and the Burning Crusade that won't be in? Um... I think they never. It's not. They never. It's not. Ugh, start again. You know, speak <laughs> properly. Um, it's hard. English difficult. Yeah, huh? English difficult, yo. Um, I don't think it was ever a situation that it will never come in. I just think they've looked at the priority. They've looked at. Drenai are very heavily involved in the whole law process of the expansion. So I think they've just looked at it, and gone. Let's concentrate on this. I think what would, what would we much, what would we do? At the moment, we're all pissed off with the fact that um, the game's delayed. I think that um, if they said, "Oh, we're going to put this, we're going to delay the game a month mm -hmm. for this," um, I think you'll probably find out that. Well, we we'd happily say, um, "Sod it, don't give us it," because. We're nearing a year of Orgrimmar? We're nearing a year of Orgrimmar. We'd much rather the game coming out. I think that's the better, more the bigger gist of it at the moment. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that's the situation right at the moment. And let's see how it goes. Yeah. And the LJ? Uh, Blood Elf models? <sighs> I agree with, with Matt, though. The, uh, it's... it's I, I like what they said. They would they would uh, focus on the older models more, and I think that's more important because they look absolute shit. shit. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to keep it PG thirteen here. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, if you compare, of course, the Draenei and Blood Elves also updated. If you're going to compare them against the Goblin and the Worgen, but I mean. Um, they are still a uh, very uh, a lot more higher on polygon count than uh, uh, dwarfs, for instance. I mean, I think it's just good. Uh, of course, it's a shame that they won't be all there at launch, but I think it's uh, more important that they prioritize the more important things first instead of um, well, we uh, postponing the launch because the Blood Elves skins don't look as shiny as the others. And to yeah. be honest, who wants to see? I mean, they're already so uh, thin as possible. Why would you want? To, you can't see any difference, anyways. So <laughs> let's go on to the next uh, subject. All right. Yeah. To conclude, my own thoughts on it. Uh, oh, nobody cares. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> People don't whine. It was it was already a stretch that we get the the Burning Crusade models in as well before launch. We're getting the Drenna ones because they're at, at the core of the story of Warlords of Draenor. They're one of the main races of Draenor, uh, since they moved there eons ago, etc. So, it sucks, but once the models are in, the other models will be old, and everyone will suddenly want to be a Blood Elf because they're shiny and new. Yeah, um, exactly. Well, think, as I said, the problem is not yeah. going to be, I don't think it's going to be as bad. As um, we think, I don't think it is going to take that long for them to come. Just, they've just said they're not going to be there at launch. So, 
we'll see. I reckon it'll probably be the first patch or something that'll come in. Um, so, it's not too bad. Yeah. Um, so Everything just have patience. Built. Warlords of Jonah is already heavily delayed. Whether Blizzard will admit it or not, it is. We, if, going back to BlizzCon, how it should have been all out already, etc. Just let them finish the product now. Uh, they're actually going at a pretty good pace in the j beta right now. And uh, although it it would be a stretch for it there to be an October launch, it might still happen if they're going at this pace. So um, just hang in there and the Blood Elf model will come out eventually. Um, up next, continuing with... Um, uh, oh no, M moving on from character models, sorry. Uh, the Gamescom uh, Gamescom is next week, uh, or the week after the 12th? No, 8th. So, next eight, week. Yeah. Uh, and there's going to be a special Warlords of Drenner event. Um, one is a really simple question, speculating time, what could it be? A cinematic, or perhaps even a, an announcement for a release date? Any takers on who would like to go first? Nope. I think for me it's um, you might as well go with the com the part, and I'm trying to remember it. What actually went for last time? I can't remember. Uh, I can't. Last time, it, I think it was a release date. I thought the cinematic might have come a little bit earlier. Well, I so can I check quickly. You might be right in the cinematic. But at the end of the day, anything. I. I I'm looking for, because I don't know about you, because uh, I thought a lot of us were a little bit depressed when it came to the... Um, it was the of opening of cinematic. Sorry to interrupt, but it was the opening cinematic. Ah, cool. So, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I, I hope it's cinematic. Uh, I prefer release dates, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh, LJ, release date, cinematic, which is more likely? Cinematic, definitely. They, I think they almost always do that. Before, uh, like, release that a little bit before it at the most popular event possible. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I would say that, that it's the... Cinematic, and we'll have to. We'll have like we can, you know, be happy with that to put in a PG thirteen way for uh, for a week, and then go back to moaning why the game isn't there yet. Yeah, but but let's be honest, they do make all to always make one hell of a cinema cinematic. So uh, they are a force to be reckoned with. With that, they are. So we'll we'll see what we get. You know, I, I'd love the WoW movie to actually just be done completely by the Blizzard cinematic people. Because then you'd know it'd be awesome anyway. They're so freaking amazing at cinematics. That they are. You can't deny yep. that they know what they're doing on cinematics. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, and to complete the round, I agree. Cinematic is most likely... Um, if it would be the uh, release date announcement, that would mean uh, it could be in October. But otherwise, it'll be, as we've said many times on the podcast, the release date is going to be in December or at the very least late November. It won't yeah. be before BlizzCon. There's just uh, no way. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's just, let's just let's say, it, no matter what the zone we're getting into now, so it's going to be good news, but it's still going to be depressing. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, we're all going to be sitting there going, oh, yeah, this is amazing. We've got the cinematic. Then you'll sit there and go, oh, yeah, we've still got lots <laughs> of odd grimmer. Yeah, well, speaking on behalf of the both of us, at least we now have Heroic Garrison Farm. That oh, helps yeah. a lot. Yeah, so it, oh, we, well, that sounds weird. Guild-wise, the guild is sort of picking up a little bit due to issues and malarkey mm. that we've had since. So it seems to be levelling out a little bit and getting a decent, uh, a decent sort of gist now, which is nice. But yeah, um, 
but at the end of the day, he's still, I'm, I don't know. I'm still depressed by the whole thing. Yeah. I, I, I try not to think about it. If I think about it too much, uh, so I think I logged on to Woe today for about half an hour, queued up for LFR. LFR was the most depressing thing known to man. Isn't it always? Well, we wiped, we kept wiping on um, Galacras. Wow. That's special. Yeah, and uh, I was, I went up the first time, was bugging, and so I couldn't click anything, but I just didn't do that. No, but the second, the first time the tower group died, second time tower group died, and then it, but the first time it took 10 minutes to wipe because the healers wouldn't stop healing. So we just kept killing the ads. We must have gone through about 10 groups of ads, and I just stood there. And didn't die. So, yeah. It was depressing in the end. That's special. Well, shall we continue on to other slightly depressing news? The oh, Alliance I... Chopper. It's going to be in-game. People wanted that. I wanted that. But it's going to cost gold. And uh, since I last checked, there has been an update on the price. Not an exact price, but an indication. It's going to be in range of the Mammoths. So the real question is, traveling mammoth or just normal mammoths? Is it going to be 8 to 16k or 30 to freaking k? Bollocks. Yeah. That's what I think. Uh, I'm sorry, I understand the competition um, for doing it free, but it was a competition at the end of the day. Um, I believe that the Alliance Mount should come into the game, it should be free, but it should be um, a reward for doing something. It should be later on, maybe the first patch. Give us a quest um, to do it instead. Yeah, something to do. It should be a reward. I do not think. I think it, just putting it in there to purchase from gold is a bit mm, half ass cheap, to be honest. To be quite frank. I, I mean, understand the worry about the amount of money it's in game. I know a lot of people. Uh, yeah, but it's game. even gold. It's like, why? why? Yeah. I know that, I know. That sometimes to try and take gold out of the game and stuff like that. It's going to be one of those things that will sell. That's why I do it with mounts. But. The, the issue you've got now with the amount of people if someone if i want if if you want something you can just go out and farm if you really want it you can get enough gold say so my fiance plays as well if she wanted to farm she can quite easily make 10k in a day relatively quickly and a lot of people can do that if they farm mm -hmm. so it just i don't know it's it's gimmicky making it charge a fee as I've just pointed out, if we want it, we're quite easy to be able to get it. Yeah. But then again, that also adds the question of what's the point? Because it, it looks all right, but... It looks r rather good, actually. It, look, it, it looks, looks better than the bike in real life. <laughs> yeah. It, <laughs> That's it pretty look, bad. <laughs> yeah. It look as shiny, which is nice, but I don't know. Um... It is a little bit disappointing um, that we are. Go it just seems a little bit cheap. I can't, I can't understand why they've done it. They're, just, they're trying to do something to get a little bit more money out of the game. But at the end of the day, what's the, uh, people just farm it if they want anyway. So we'll see, it, will, it will sell. It will take some money out of the game, but it's a bit of a pointless thing to do. Yeah, the thing is, though, under the pretense of the competition, sure, the horde has to win it had something, but if you look at how it was no competition at all between the Horde and the Alliance, it wasn't even close. Horde won every single region. Yeah, which was always going to happen. Course, <laughs> to be fair, you look you look at the top, it, the, it was a pretty flawed um, concept anyway. Yeah, because it, the Horde is a cooler theme. People think the Horde is cooler. Because let's face it, the Alliance are eh, the righteous uh, oh, group. We're and, righteous, man. And that's oh, not cool, God. so people won't vote for that. So, to begin with, the concept was flawed. So, honestly, as an Elias player, I would want them to just give the bike to everyone anyway. Not for any goal, to just uh, give it to us. And then, uh, for anyone who hasn't logged in, because you have to log in at least once before September 30th. Otherwise, you won't get the mounts on the Horde side. Uh, do the same thing. Everyone gets it until September 30th. After that, for both factions, you have to actually buy the mount. 
All right, I forgot September 30th. I probably well, to me, so game time before then. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it is just a situation of I actually don't. I don't think that matter. I think they should. Yeah, it should have been free. I agree with you, but probably it should have been free. A sort of say six months later, you were going to get it eventually. There you mm. go, Forge. You've got yours. Oh, by the way, it should have been one of those announcements made when it went a bit quiet. It should have been something they gave us in between the first patch and the second patch, if you know what I mean, or something like that. Something they gave us to keep us going. Oh, look, you'll get this. Mm -hmm. Instead, it, it feels a little bit, oh, look, you'll get this because it's sort of trying to hide the fact that we're delayed getting the expansion. Well, I don't think Azroth Choppers was something to fill up time because Warlords is delayed. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about the annou announcement of the bike. It's almost like, here's something else. The Azroth Choppers, yeah, fair enough. But we all knew... To give the masses pleased, you mean? Yeah, we all knew that we were going to get the Horde bike. Yeah. And this just seems like, oh, the Alliance, you're going to get this as well. And it just seems that they're trying to... It was something quick and easy that they can actually give us. Mm -hmm. without having to really go into that much detail. They probably had it designed already, if you know what I mean. So. Well, yeah. when was the last episode of Azeroth Choppers? That was like in May, wasn't it? Yeah. So the beta, or alpha rather, was already out by then. The alpha was, but the beta wasn't. I don't okay, know. but the alpha was announced, so... Uh, or at least the start of the alpha was announced. So that was the end of the period where nothing was said or done. So they couldn't have filled the few months that we barely got any information with the announcement for the second Azeroth chopper because it wasn't oh, no, I understand. yet. I understand, I understand what you're saying, but what I'm saying is now it seems that they've brought it in. Not what's happened before. It's, it just seems a pointless thing that they've brought on. It's just like, here you go, here's something else you've got. And I think it's partly because we never... You just partly said it there. In mm. May, we yeah. had no idea when it was coming out with very little information. All we're getting now is patch notes a bit in there. We're getting a bit from Fat Boss with um, uh, videos. You're doing a few videos. Everybody's doing a few videos. But from actual Blizzard's side, it just seems like here's another thing they're doing, the class changes. And it's just like, oh, by the way, here's something else. Yeah. Okay, well, f for that... Let's face it, there's not much new types of content coming out with Warlords, so there's not much to announce for Blizzard. And that's Not on the why... World of Warcraft front. I mean, you have like Hearthstone yeah. and such now with the Plague Border and such. Yeah. Exactly. You have other things, but on the World of Warcraft front, you have zero to nil. Yeah, it's... For World of Warcraft, as far as news goes, it's just been... An awkward stage and it will continue to be an awkward stage until there's actually a release date for World of Genor. Yeah. And then because after that we'll get patch 6.0 with all the changes. We'll get Mythic Orgrimmar where people can already start getting used to the stat squish and the new raid setups. Excuse me. The hiccup. Um, so the ball will st start rolling then. Oh shut up LJ. <laughs> <laughs> So for now, it sucks, and on the other side, it, it's actually good for fan sites like us, MMO Champion, Wowhead, uh, Fat Boss. We get to put out content that people are interested in. And we have the Garrison Preview Series. By the way, thank you Blizzard for the sharing on Facebook and Twitter. That was awesome. It yeah, crashed our site, bro. but it was awesome. That's oh, a good crash, huh? Exactly, it's a good <laughs> crash. And then, of course, the day after, the server at the web host crashed. But whatever. Uh, Probably due to uh, our website as well. <laughs> I, I no comments. <laughs> um, starting t tonight, because I'm going to be video editing after the podcast finishes, uh, we're starting our dungeon uh, preview series. We actually have someone new on the WoW well, Weekly crew. Uh, that's recording the du beta dungeons, so keep out a look for that. Um, but I'm starting to lose my trail thoughts, obviously, because it's uh, long. 
Uh, anyway, the point is, uh, there is content coming out, just not from Blizzard, but still about Warlords of Draenor. Yeah. Uh, people can still see what's happening with Warlords of Draenor, uh, from the zones, quests, uh, screenshots, videos, the dungeons, garrisons, etc. It's just not from uh, R Blizzard uh, yeah. and World of Warcraft. That b ball will really start rolling once the release date has been announced, when 6.0 comes around, and people will actually want to log back into the game to actually get used to the ability pruning, for example, the uh, stats squish and all that stuff. So I wouldn't be too worried about that. Sure, it's awkward, and it seems off the announcement for the uh, chopper itself, but all in all, it's expected at this point, because really, Warlords of Jenner should have been out in June at the latest. It's looking like December at this point. Yeah, which unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I wish it would have been it would be earlier, but yeah. Yeah, so we just have to roll with it now and um as far as as being a fan side goes, take advantage of it. And uh I've not been sleeping much the last few weeks and getting out content, so I I intend to uh sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I intend Maybe to sleep, sleep tomorrow. I, I'm definitely going to sleep in tomorrow, but uh, the last couple of days, no. Just as long as you know it's a fan website, not a maniac website. <laughs> hey, well. Well, I'm actually going to attempt to play some more um, Heroes of the Storm tomorrow. Mm, yeah, the removal yeah. of the artifacts. Finally, great. <laughs> they were a terrible uh, idea to begin with because that was taken from League of Legends, and I didn't really like the League of Legends system. I much prefer Dota 2 com uh, compared to League of Legends. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on to World of Warcraft. Um, so, instead of a discussion point this week, uh, this morning we went on Twitter and Facebook and asked uh, you guys, the uh, fans, to um, propose things to talk about on the uh, podcast if you have any questions for us. So... To our surprise, we actually got the first responses, which is pretty awesome in and of itself. We're really glad uh, you're actually uh, liking our content. Um, so let's uh, actually just go through the fan questions. Starting with, will we see Illidan Storm Rage in Warlords of Draenor? Uh -oh. Yeah. I'll let the um, law junkies start over that one. And, um, sure. My I'll start then because definitely. I'm probably the biggest lore junkie of us three. I'm really into the World of Warcraft lore. And yeah. honestly, no. I don't think we'll see Illidan. Um, you don't? No, because the dark portal in the alternate universe is going to close down for um, alternate, alternate universe Azeroth. So Illidan won't be able to make it through the portal anyway. Doesn't mean they won't open it up later in the expansion on some miraculous kind of way. That's true. But uh, the thing is, we'll be dealing with the Burning Legion from the alternate universe. At least assuming that every universe has its own Burning Legion, and not that the Burning Legion itself is separate from all the timelines. That's something that's not clear, because look at uh, Prince Malkazar, for example... He had uh, access to all kinds of portals, if you remember, in Karazhan. I don't want to remember, but yeah. He was amazing. <laughs> well, uh. there's always the conundrum of Prince Malkazar and the fact that he had Gorhau, which is in possession by Garrosh Hellscream. Yeah. So there's they always might, still the they, question... They might, they might use that in some way to, you know... Also, the space-time continuum thing. Exactly, so that could <laughs> indicate that we'll be actually be dealing with the same Burning Legion we've already been dealing with. Yeah. And uh, if they're going to be messing around on uh, Draenor, yeah, because we're there and the Iron Horde is different, and uh, as, as far as the Shadow Council goes in corrupting all the orcs, that plan fails because Garrosh uh, stops them from drinking the demon blood except for Gul'dan and a few of his uh, acolytes, or whatever you want to call them. Yeah. Um, they're going to have to deal with us to continue their plans anyway. 
Um, I really don't want to get into spoilers because some pretty major events happen in the beta, which we already have access to. And that also messes up the timeline, as in what the intentions for the Burning Legion could be. But that could mean that um, they won't pursue uh, the Lich King, uh, Arthas still, to actually become the Lich King himself. And then you have the battle from Warcraft 3 uh, between the Lich King and Illidan not happening. And then Illidan won't go to Outland. So yeah. there's a lot of different events that would uh, conflict and... The Burning Legion is tied into them all. So in the end, it was all a dream by Medivh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was a dream man, and he woke up and it was all cuddles, it was all flowers. It yep. was just a nightmare, nice. all of it. Yep. Oh my god. He woke so, up, he got a glass of milk, and he went back to bed again, and everything was Exactly. <laughs> everything in World of Warcraft has been a dream for Medivh. Yep. Everything is awesome. So, at least no, to man. wrap it up from my perspective, it depends on how the events turn out in the alternate universe. Um, what the, the s different steps are that the Burning Legion is going to make. And how much we'll actually see them in Drenor. And uh, depending on all those things, um, I don't think we'll see Illidan. I think uh, they'll keep him there. <clears throat> there is the possibility that they'll bring him back because he's an iconic character. But I think they'll let him rest. And... Uh, yeah, that's it. LJ. I, I pretty much agree with that, though. Yeah, I think there's more, probably a lot more emphasis on the bringing him back because he is a very iconic character. I mean, mm -hmm. next to him, there's almost, there are only a few that are ju just as iconic, like Arthas and such. Yeah, he's a bit, he's a lot of Britney Spears, it's, you know. <laughs> wow. At least he doesn't shave his head. But, uh. Wow, guys, really? <laughs> if we're going to bring him Britney Spears. Mm -hmm. uh, and Arthur's is Madonna but <laughs> continuing on uh, I think that if you look at uh, pure franchise wise and pure World of Warcraft wise is that Mate Garrosh Nicki Minaj no. oh I think you went there man <laughs> <laughs> Moving nah, on. but um, also uh, yeah like Garrosh and all those main characters I mean it's just purely a, a, based on the interest I mean we've uh, uh, encountered a lot of times characters that we didn't expect to encounter anymore. Mm -hmm. Kael'thas! <clears throat> but, uh, hmm. yeah. Was it Kael'thas that died about 85 million times? Just yeah. twice. But it, was, but it was just merely a setback. <laughs> yeah. so, it's just merely I mean, a setback. I've died again. Blizzard, it wouldn't be the first time Blizzard uh, pulled something uh, like a rabbit out of the hat like that. And Purely basing on that and not on lore, which because with the lore, if you look at it, it is fairly difficult to actually bring him back. Um, but just purely basing it on the the will of Blizzard to bring him back and the will of the fan base that wants him back, mm -hmm. I think it's it, it might be very likely that we we, we, we see him in a, a minor or even ma a major role. But uh, who knows? I mean, every expansion has five patches almost, something like that, four or five patches. Mm hmm so there's always room enough for any diversion from the main story and see what happens there. Yeah. If anything, I would like them to bring back Karazhan in some uh, for, uh, some um, form. Renewed Karazhan forms. was a really, really Be cool place. Yeah, yeah. because Karazhan, you can tie in with all those... Uh, uh, the Basically, Medivh and the Dark Basically, Portal. Exactly. That as well. That's a much easier uh, gateway than Illidan and everything. And it was also exactly. such a, um, for the people who remember doing it the first time around, it was, how do I put this? It's, you, it's just special. It is special, and even it was one of the first places I, I, I remember playing vanilla and not well, maybe if I was played a fair bit, and we just got into raiding, relatively organised, if you know what I mean. Not mm -hmm. hardcore, but we're actually instead of just like joining pubs, we're actually raiding a few friends. It was organised raiding, and then you there was the best guild on the server, and they were sitting there going, "It is the worst thing that it was one of the hardest things." I think, and this is just the trash. I'm pretty sure it was like the, um, oh, what are they called. Is it skeletal guardians or something like that? In there? At which part? Um, 
after, after Maiden, um, b- before you get to the... Before the opera event. Before the opera event. Yeah, those were yeah. skeletal guards. And when the first... Oh, those Frozen... Uh, oh, yeah, that was yeah. always a lot of fun. When, when, the, when you like, first did it, guild hmm. were, guilds were doing 10-man raids and taking three tanks just for that bit of trash. And you're sitting there going, Really? So it was. It, oh, I quite liked it. It was really pretty, pretty cool. I love that place. Not. It's one of those. Well. It's one, it was one of those experiences that you'll never forget, no matter what. I mean, and I'm just not talking about gaming. I'm talking about your life, because it was just so much fun. A lot of people started raiding there, and I'd still raid. And yeah, I think bringing Carson back would be a far easier and more fun uh, thing for them to do. Yeah, but I don't think they should rehash Karazhan itself. I think they should use had the style of Karazhan and create a brand new raid from it. Yeah, I, there, I don't mean there can be an place. alternative, uh, trapped in time version of a po- even lower Karazhan if they can uh, switch it around to that. Even I don't know five man if at worst. Yeah, but a brand new dungeon just with the style and yeah. feel of Karazhan. I think that, that could work quite well. So that's what I, I'd rather see. Yeah. I, I think Illidan should just stay dead for now. Uh, maybe they can bring him back when we have a Burning Legion expansion. Because uh, if he's part demon and even though he's killed, he should be back in uh, the Burning Nether. Whatever the... Uh, yeah, that's part of World of Warcraft is called for the demons um, so he'll have gone back to that I would think as a demon or part demon uh, so they should keep him for something that fits better yeah. um, so let's move on to the next fan question which is um, what do we think of the garrisons in their current form now even though Matt hasn't played it. I'm sure he's seen a lot of about garrisons. If not, Matt, why haven't you been looking at our content? Uh, <laughs> what? So, Matt, garrisons. What do you think about them in their current state? Well, I was going to say I'll let. So, I'm not. I'll let you two go first. One because you've actually done it, been there, and seen it, and I'm just depressed because I've still not got the beta. I'm still, I'm still depressed and kicking. I'm not very happy. Of course, you're depressed. It's okay. Oh, go no. cry. Go cry at mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so LJ instead then, because Matt sucks. Oh, <laughs> uh, I haven't played. Uh, well, well, you know how far I've gone into the beta. You've probably mm-hmm. gone far, much further than me now. Mm-hmm. But uh, I like Harrison's in the current form. Oh, I mean, beta's still very buggy and very difficult at the moment. Put it like that. Um, which really gives it, uh, makes it hard to actually say they are good in their current form. It's more like we are expecting things that we that bugs and such to vanish and to improve, and that mm-hmm. the garrison is going to be better. So you got to take that into account as well. That being said, I think the future, the the current form and the future for it are very bright, and I think that it it really is a very good, uh, a very well thought out, fun option or option uh, part of the game. So yeah, okay. I, I really like it. For me, I'm actually not so sure about it, because while leveling up, it's going to be good content. While you don't have your buildings maxed out, it's going to be good content. However, once you've reached the max end game content, and you've done the leveling of your garrison, and um, basically the quests for them, right now there isn't really good... um, Endgame stuff to validate the amount of resources being put into garrisons. So that's the one thing that, for me, they still have to really implement is what are we going to do with the garrison once we've done the leveling up? How are we going to actually spend a lot of time with our garrison to make it fun content, to make it last, to actually give us something to do outside of the eight, seven or eight dungeons and... Uh, doing factions and stuff like that. How so is it going to last? Yeah. This is a question to you two, and for me to say, I've only watched videos and stuff like that, and I've read a fit, little bit. How close to the actual farming system, like with your farm, the novelty mm-hmm. of having a farm, woo, 
does it actually feel to you at the moment? It does it feel more of a novelty at the moment than actually new content? Honestly, probably yes. I know it sounds. I got to be honest. Yeah. So, because like, that's what my main worry about it is. My main worry about the whole premise of the idea of having this wonderful new little idea of going, oh my god, you can do this, man. Um, is that people are going to get lost in the whole wow? We've got a garrison, and everyone's going to be thinking, oh, this is amazing, this is amazing. And all of a sudden, it's going to be actually, it's pretty pants. Yeah, the thing is, because I, it is new right now, so it is fun to play with and to do stuff with. You'll, you will want to go back to your garrison once per day, assuming you've unlocked the quests for the herb garden and the mines. Because at the very least, you'll be able to get some materials every single day from the herb garden and the mines. At the same time, from whichever profession buildings you choose, you'll be able to make some uh, profession materials once, thrice, or five times a day. So, there is stuff to come back to, even if it's just to get the um, profession materials to sell in the auction house. However, I wouldn't call that engaging fun content. What is the um, thing looking like at the moment the, um, with your minions? Um, okay, so current... Is there, a yellow, is there a yellow minion with one eye? Um, well, first of all, you can check both all the Alliance and Horde uh, followers out on my weekly, so check that out. Matt, why haven't you? How dare you? Oh, sorry. <laughs> that aside, um, here's the... Unless... Um, LJ, you want to tell about the followers? Otherwise, I will, because... No, I'll go for it, man. Okay. You know more about them, and you can explain it better, Sean. Yeah, okay. So, currently, you have... You can collect up to 20 minions. That's the cap. There's a lot more than 20 minions in the game, or followers. I'm going to call them minions, obviously, because I'm evil. Um... <laughs> but, um... <laughs> but, um... Yeah. So, you can collect up to 20 minions... And if you get your barracks to level 2, assuming you keep your barracks, that uh, cap increases by 10. So if you have a level 2 barracks, you can get 30 minions instead of 20. Um, now, every minion you'll have to level up through making them do missions and stuff like that. Uh, there are some pretty cool models uh, for the minions. There's a, uh, yeah arcane-type golem thing, but a new variation of it. There's some ogres, so that's pretty cool. Um, One like Shrek. <laughs> no, but there is a, an ogre that's an ex-gladiator, if that makes it any better. Ogres are like onions. <laughs> yeah, okay, so moving on from Matt's... Antics. Antics, exactly. <laughs> um, so there's that. You, you can level up your uh, followers a lot. Sometimes you have invasions in your garrison although they are bugged right now so we don't see what the end result is or the end uh, reward is for that yet uh, one thing that is fun though for the garrisons is that uh, when you have an invasion you actually have some of your followers join your party as it were so they're guardians oh. and they help you defend against the invasion I think right now that's four or five followers I'm not sure how they're chosen but uh, you actually have some of them join you in defending your garrison. I'd like to see actually all your followers, so the more followers you've collected, the easier the invasion become, becomes. But uh, maybe that's overpowered, I don't know. Um, I would have liked to see that. Uh, so you see how many followers you've actually gotten, and that is an advantage. Um, Might still be an option that uh, can be done. Uh, exactly, maybe they're still working on it, we don't know. Yeah. Um, so there's that, which is pretty fun. Um, but there is variation. They have different um, statistics, abilities that counter missions, uh, mobs, basically. Uh, missions have enemies and they have an ability which can be countered. It's uh, different per mission and which mobs they have. And so you'll have to um, basically mix and match your followers as much as possible so you can get as many... Uh, Quests, uh, missions done successfully. Yeah. So there's a bit of that. So there's variety, um, but the uh, traits, as they're called, 
They feel a little bit gimmicky. They're just there because for the mix and match. They're not really interesting. They're just there for, huh? this is how it has to be done. Um, and when you counter the uh, traits of the enemies, you have a better chance of getting the extra reward. Uh, right now in the beta, if you fill a mission, you don't get any experience for your followers. Um, hiccup again. I'm not sure if that's intended. Um, okay. Because when you fill a mission, your followers become exhausted or... Um, so you get you basically get the penalty, but you don't get any reward. Yeah. Pretty much. Although, now that I think about it, the exhaustion might be from the long missions. Because they filled anyway, now that I think about it. Uh, there are level 100 missions that actually take like 8 or 12 hours. And they have the tag exhausting. And um, right now, it doesn't. You can't get your minions out of exhaustion. So uh, once you've tried that, um, you actually just can't do anything with those followers on the beta. So that kind of sucks. They really need to get a new build in that actually solves that. Uh, yeah. Your build will be early next week. Um, there was just a small build with a fix this week. Anyway, so that's that about the minions. Outside of that, uh, the buildings give certain advantages. Um, for all the different advantages, I highly suggest you check out the videos on YouTube because I'm not going to go all o over all 21 of them or 22, how many there are. So it needs endgame content. It needs to prove that it lasts outside of getting some materials and uh, sending your mi followers on new missions otherwise yes. it's a otherwise it will be a gimmick it will get old pretty quickly um, and there is work t still to be done even though there already have been so many resources put into garrisons to be fair it does sound a lot like say, I'm, I've played different games you know I don't say it, does, it so far does sound a lot like um, the way that the houses work in Wildstar, whereas they are basically there somewhere a little bit more... No, no, they're definitely different than that. Definitely different than that. And I was just going to say, with the gimmick of having a <clears throat> add or someone that you can use as well. No, no, no. The, the, the houses in Wildstar are way more to the background. The creation is way more up in the, in your face, basically, when you're leveling. You really need it. You, you use it. You do stuff with it. Uh, you, you... It's a core part of the leveling experience. Exactly. And your house and wild stars, it's, it's nice to have. You can get the rest of the experience from there, but for the rest, it's nothing. So it's definitely more immersive than wild star. That's fair enough, then. You should have stunned him, Matt, for that aside. It has nothing to do with the podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> for, a for Abra, you always just throw your Pokeball and hope for mm. the best. That's what right. I always do. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pokemon. Who hasn't played Pokemon? Manly talks. Manly talk. This is how you catch your Pokemon. <laughs> uh, nothing to got to do about men, well, men be going back 10, 10, 15 years and back in time and then uh, talking about hobbies from then, huh? Right. Pokemon. I'm sorry I even made a remark. <laughs> <laughs> I regret Why, it's Pokemon, now. don't be sorry. Embrace your heritage. <laughs> My heritage, right. <laughs> um, so, that was the last fan question. However, uh, the Garrison fan question led us to something else. Um, that actually came from Matt's. What are your general um, impressions of the Drenor content right now from the beta. This time, Matt, you've seen videos. You get to talk about it. Go. Um, and just so you know, Drowsy appeared. But anyway, it's the bits I've seen. I've, I've mainly the videos of the dungeons, and uh, say so I, I did steal someone's account. Have a quick look at the lowdown, and I'm worried by the starting area. Um. I don't know. There just seems something about that. I don't. It, I don't know. It just seems like, like it's going to be a pure lag fest again. Maybe it's me panicking. Maybe it's me just being a little bit 
Agreed. I just don't think having a set chain of quests to do for the start of a dungeon is a really good idea. Um, I've seen three dungeons, I think, so far of all the ones that have been released. Um, the one which you did, you not have done as well. I've completely forgot what it's called. The dungeon. Yeah. Which one was um, What was the video you posted? Um, the first slag one. Mines. Slag Love mines. Slag mines. Slag mines is good. I like that. I like what they've done with that. I like the fact there's two or three um, different things in there that are quite nice and are pretty cool. Uh, different mechanics. Um, but they all look pretty tidy. They all look pretty nice. But then, say, the last one I looked at was um, the depot one, which was really quite... I quite like that instance. I like the way that it's um, on a train. It's running. It looks really quite nice. It looks... Um, it does look really quite a good little instance. So I do quite like that. But, let's say... It, I don't know. I'm just worried about main the starting area it's gonna look it's gonna look fine we are all gonna level okay i'm just very worried about the starting area. i don't think it's gonna work i think it's gonna be a complete lag fest again at the start of the um, expansion um i think the dungeons look good but they're very limited and the fact there's only eight of them so i think that we are going to be very bored very quickly mm-hmm. one thing i'll say before i throw it to lj um, the starting event, they they did not learn their lesson. They absolutely did not. They're going to focus so many players in a small area again, and honestly, it's it's going to be busier than Tokyo on a, on a normal weekday. I mean, seriously, yeah. it's going to be overflowing with people. It's not going to be fun. Yeah, that. And it's <laughs> just why doesn't Blizzard learn from their uh, mistakes? I sure I get it. You want to have the start of the expansion to have, be a fun event, but that doesn't work well at the ex- at the actual launch. It just doesn't. Mystic yeah. Mario was terrible. The the the, uh, the the event itself is such could be can be fun, but it's the circumstances that don't make it fun. And yeah. Blizzard should be prepared enough uh, because and experienced enough with everything with all of it by with all the expansion they've already had and done. I mean, yeah. it's not enough for them to say, well, the experience is what counts and it should be fun. And what well, we said down was fun, but you knew the experience was going to be shit because five million people wanted to do it at the same time. Yeah. Unless cramming, they, yeah, try unless cramming they do 5, like 5,000 Star people Wars. in the same train car. I mean, it's not going to be fun either. If we're going to get separate instances on the same realm that the player load is spread out, then great. If it's not... Oh dear God! It's going to be horrible. It is. It's I mean, really uh, I'm right now. I'm not looking forward to the launch for just that event. Yeah. I mean, the event itself is fun, but I mean, with beta, I mean, nobody's there. It's so it's completely isolated. So yeah. Yeah, I think the it, it, oh, the bit. I say I really did a little bit of the starting area, but the starting area that I did. Um. The first bit just didn't. I was just. I was just looking at it, going, "Oh, that's going to be a complete mayhem." And I was just looking at it from a starting perspective, and I was just getting really worried by it all. I was just sitting there going, "This is really not going to work." Yep. This is. No, I was just thinking, this is really, really going to be. Um, Pants on the head, retarded. Yeah, I, I was just thinking it's going to be really disturbing. Really not going to work, yeah. but. We'll see. If it does, if it works, brilliant. Yeah, so there's that. Um, then I'll throw it to you, LJ, general beta impression. Exactly the same. We can be quick and short about that because it's, it's exactly the same as you guys said. So, yeah. Okay. I shall just uh, form in the queue and see what happens. Okay, so I think we'll actually end the podcast here then. I think we're actually running a bit long, <clears throat> which isn't too bad of a thing considering how the past few weeks have been for the podcast. Exactly. So I'd like to thank uh, the viewer for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please 
comment, subscribe, click on the like button. Let us know in the comments uh, what you thought of it and what you would like to hear us discuss in the next podcast. Um, we really enjoyed the feedback uh, from the uh, social media, even if it was just a few um, comments. Always looking for more. Um, so let us know with that. Um, check us out on Wow Weekly. Uh, oh yeah, WowWeekly.net. But where I was trying to go to was Facebook at facebook.com slash wowweekly or Twitter at twitter.com slash bmezzy. Uh, follow or like us there and um, when we bring out new content, it'll appear right in your social media. Uh, whether it's your news feed or your Twitter feed, um, it'll be there every single time. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I so like, encouraging. I know, right? So um, I'd like to thank LJ and Matt for coming back and uh, finally being able to have a good podcast again. It's been fun. Yeah. That's been totally great. Good. Missed you, man. <laughs> well, I didn't miss you. Oh. I hate you. You're a horrible human being. Well, you know. <laughs> so um, Yet you yeah. invite him back every time. I know something's wrong there. I I feel like it's an abusive relationship, and obviously the abuse is coming from Matt and not me at oh, all. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. Okay, so uh, thanks to the viewer uh, for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks to Blizzard for the awesome shares and crashing our sites. And uh, I'm Mezzy, and we'll see you again next time.